should it be work first or training first for the long-term unemployed? I wouldn't like to make uh, it uh, an either-or choice. I think it very much depends on the circumstances uh, in the individual country, the circumstances in the local labour market, and the degree to which the long-term unemployed person is ready and able to be matched to an existing vacancy. In some cases, a work-first strategy will be good. In other cases, the long-term unemployed person will lack certain skills so that investing in training, particularly training that is linked to the needs in local labour markets, will be the best strategy for that person. In your presentation, you've shown the mixed picture of uh, individual labour market programmes and you've given some examples as well. Some work, some don't. Right. Can you tell us why? It seems very clear that um, job search uh, advice and counselling works very well for people who are relatively close to the labour market and who are quite job ready, shall we say. Uh, labour market training programmes can work, particularly if we take a long-term perspective, so long as the training programmes are tied to the needs of local employers. Public sector job creation schemes, which are very popular in many countries, do not, in general, provide good results in terms of increasing the probability of finding a regular job uh, in the regular labour market, though they may well have some social and private benefits. It's also interesting that many of the evaluations suggest that the programmes work better for adult women than they do for adult men. And the most depressing part of the story really is the long-term unemployed young people or people who, young people who are very disadvantaged. There are very few programs that seem to work for this particular group and that is a real worry, I think. Should we invest more in public training and what does it take to be successful? If we were talking, uh, say, five years ago, I would have been much more negative about investment in public training programs for the unemployed, especially for the long-term unemployed. But more recent evaluations are showing a more positive picture, particularly when you follow the participants uh, once they've left the training program into employment for, shall we say, a period of five to seven or eight years. These programs, so long as they're well designed, do seem to yield positive benefits for the individuals, but also for society. And among the things that are important to build into the design are again the features that there has to be a strong link to the needs in the local labour market. So you need to involve the local employers in the design of these training programs. Indeed, as much as possible, if you can get the local employers to offer some workplace training, that will also help. It's also important to have strong union support for such programs. Uh, we say that people with low skills or no digital skills are the most uh, disadvantaged and of course they need training uh, to have a chance of landing a job. But what about those with medium or high skills who still can get a job uh, because, of, for example, there are too many competitors uh, with a similar profile? In a situation where there's a lot of unemployment, many uh, people will have to accept jobs for which they will feel themselves overqualified and they may well be overqualified. The hope is that a after they find employment and after the employer can observe just what their true level of skills are, that there will be the possibility of progressing with the same employer or alternatively uh, moving to another employer whose job, uh, jobs will match their skills and abilities better. Um, it is a problem. There are a lot of people who are overqualified, just as well as there are some people who look underqualified but who are actually quite skilled. Now we have other people who are in a job but at risk of losing it. What should they do? You should always pay attention to your skills profile and how that is being adapted uh, to the needs in the labour market. And if you need to upgrade your skills, 
then by all means try to find the best training opportunities either with your own employer or elsewhere and that can sometimes be assisted by uh, help from the public uh, from the public purse either in the form of training allowances or training vouchers or even sometimes subsidies to an employer. I think one of the important things to bear in mind now and looking to the future is that individuals have to take some more responsibility themselves for looking after their skills and upgrading their skills. They can't always just assume that the employer will look after it or that the state will look after it. And one of the strategies that you've discussed uh, is about subsidies for people to find full-time work as opposed to part-time work. Uh, at the same time, there's increasing evidence that employers are prepared to offer more and more part-time work. How do we deal with that? This is a dilemma. A few years ago, I was uh, very negative about the idea of, uh, as it were, offering hiring subsidies for full-time jobs on the argument, at least as I saw it then, that it was more important to get somebody into a job even if it was a part-time job. However, what we see with many people who are hired into part-time jobs is that they often leave those jobs or go back into unemployment simply because they do not get career progression opportunities or that the, the, the earnings they get from these jobs are not sufficiently attractive relative to what they can get on benefits. So that's the, one of the reasons why I've, I'm thinking that it may be more important, or at least it may be something that the public authorities need to pay more attention to, to try to encourage employers to offer more full-time jobs. Because full-time jobs offer a greater possibility for people to get themselves, lift themselves and their families out of poverty. But of course, for many people, and particularly for um, uh, mothers uh, or parents with, with small children or elderly relatives, a part-time job uh, is a very good way of combining the different responsibilities. So one shouldn't be categoric about this. But I do think that um, if we do want to make career progression an important objective, for uh, activation strategies, then it's worthwhile thinking more about encouraging employers to offer more full-time jobs. Given what you've just been saying and uh, the situation we find ourselves in uh, with labor market changing, automation, uh, crisis, etc., uh, it seems to me you're saying that we need to keep looking at policies and be flexible, be prepared to change uh, as things progress. That's essential. It is of course not easy for uh, the public authorities or public employment services to match quickly what is happening on the labour market because the needs of employers can vary very rapidly. But they must pay attention to what's happening out there in the labour market, to what are the evolving needs in the 21st century with the fourth industrial revolution but also, as I said, that individuals themselves, individual workers and employers need to pay more attention to those issues themselves and not rely on the state always to, as it were, step in and fill in the breach. Mm -hmm.